Hi do everybody, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle today playing another episode of Mount and Blade Warband. We've got Count Hugu over here. That's a very unfortunate name. How do you name your kid Hugu? <laughs> that's, that's one of those dressing for success type deals right there. Although, there was a guy that named one of his kids Loser and one of his kids Winner and the guy named Loser ended up being like the DEA of like a huge city and the one named Winner ended up being like a drug lord or something like that so maybe not maybe not maybe it's not as big of a deal as I think it is what about Jamish what can I do over here in this episode the things that I sort of like to lay out as our long-term concerns we do need to deal Ooh, there's King Graveth I don't want to mess with him but anyways short-term goals for this episode we're gonna continue scrapping with Rodox until the war ends I don't know where my side is even at oh they made a comeback look at that the Kurgeets made a comeback. Nords, not so much. Nords are still hanging out at Shalbeck, unfortunately. However, Swadia has made a huge push, although not really. They've more or less just sort of shifted their boundaries. They got wiped out by Rodox, but at the same time, they managed to grab some land from Vagirs. So they're still in good shape. They've got four capitals. They're sitting at four capitals. We're sitting at five capitals, which is better. I would love to take Cherie's or Weya, but Weya just has so much in it. Like, I want to get a castle very, very badly. Just haven't had the chance. Let's go rob a caravan on the way by because I love the Skrilla. Get ourselves a little bit more paper. There it is. Let's go check Weya one more time. Sometimes the lords come by and grab a retinue out of here. 55 sharpshooters. Oh my god. Everything else, though, is such a pushover that it makes me wonder if we could get away with it. It depends. The thing that scares me is if it's the one with the siege tower, where you've got to wait for that thing to kind of wheel its way on up, it would not be a winning proposition for us. But if it's one with ladders, I think we might be okay. Especially since there's no lord there, so our tactics would shift them downwards with regards to how many men they would be able to field. It's a little bit, I don't know, it would be risky. I know I've been staring at it now like every single episode for the last five episodes. It's because it's tempting. It's like a big old piece of candy sitting on the table just staring at me. I don't know why the candy has eyeballs, but it does. It's mutant candy. Let's move back to Peshmi and we'll have a look and see what the damage is over here. I had a feeling I shouldn't have gone so far out of my reach and I should have just hung out. Poor, poor Peshmi. There it is right there. That poor cow. He's been shot twice. Shooting him once wasn't enough. Let's go to Halmar, and I suppose we'll swing through the tavern in the odd hope that Nizar might be around. Nope, just mercenary swordsmen and a couple others. Can I hire you right now? No, I can't. I love mercenary swordsmen because they turn into hired blades. Hired blades are pretty badass. They're hardcore as hell. I've got other helmets. Let me throw those on somebody too before we go out and figure out what our next goal is going to be. I think we're just going to continue scrapping with Rodox. I, I don't see any reason to really do anything else. We're not at war with any other factions, so I can't really apply my skills elsewhere. What have you got going on? A battered spiked cap. Let's give him that nasal helm. Or the bassinet. The baskinet. And then for Rolf, who has no helmet whatsoever, we'll give him the other one. So there it is. Everybody's moving on up in the world. Everybody knows the cooler your hat is and the cooler your pauldrons are, the more popular you are. That's... That's a rule for the nerd castle as much as it is everywhere else. And now then. Looking at our financial situation, we do have a lot of cash. We're doing okay there. Let me look at my financial reports. And there it is. Where do I have? I have no rents coming in for Peshmi, so we're going to lose money here. Halmar, Nara, Durkabatur, and Sargoth tier. Okay, so we can put stuff in other locations. Unfortunately... We'll have to do a little bit of a ride around. So while we wait for Peshmi to recover so that we can fix it up and make it look a little bit better, let's go find ourselves some friends. Looks like they're rallying up for an offensive. On what? I'm not so sure. Looks like they've got 60, 130. I'm not seeing a whole lot of high tier units there. I think this is a party that we could effectively bust up ourselves. They do have trained crossbowmen in pretty copious amounts. Oh, never mind. There's 146 in there. Never mind. I knew there was going to be some kind of wild card up in there. There had to be a joker in the deck somewhere, and there it is. 
Let's ride inland a little bit. We'll do a tiny bit of behind enemy lines sort of spy work. Get our splinter cell on here. They want us... Oh, they're going to pay us for Uriah, sure. Okay, so we've unloaded all of our lords now. If we take a look at our inventory... I'm sorry. We do not keep prisoners in our inventory. We keep them in our party. We've got one Rodok sergeant left. That's our only prisoner remaining. So we managed to sell off everybody we've captured so far. Which is a really, really good thing. It's sort of an up and a down, though. Because in a certain respect, you want to keep people... As long as they're inside your party being captured, they can't be fighting you. So it sort of removes them from the combat. Since you can't kill off other lords, that really is the only way to isolate and eliminate lords in this game. On the opposite end, being able to make money before the round ends or before the war ends is also a good thing because you never want to get stuck with a lord in your inventory before the war ends. I mean, if that happens, then you're just like, and you end up with nothing. You've captured them for no reason whatsoever. Oh, good. As a cavalry army, I love it when this happens. I'm going to have everybody follow me, and we're going to force the enemy over to us. I'm not even going to try and fight on this terrain. This is ridiculous. This is one of those times where RNG was not in our favor. A few episodes ago it was, but this time it's not. Let's go ahead and tighten the ranks. And I'm just going to sit here with a bow and just kind of shoot at these guys. They should just run straight into our shield wall. And that'll be that for them. I don't even think that embankment... For whatever reason, the AI was able to get up over it with their horses, but I wasn't able to move because I was being blocked on, like, all sides by my own men. I was being impeded. I was being incredibly impeded. That is a very, very durable Mamluk. Look at him right there, just taking hits non-stop. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. Let's get back to it, gentlemen. Ooh, I missed. Ow! God, so many javelins. Let's get up in there and just murder him. My horse looks frankly ridiculous right now. And he's been put down. He wasn't that sick, you guys. I mean, he had a light cold, but you didn't need to take him out like that. I mean, I appreciate the gesture. You did save me on the vet bills, but... I always felt like euthanizing a pet should be like one of those things that like vets should do, like pro bono. You should have to pay for that. That totally sucks. The vet should just have a soul and be like, well, you're losing a family member today, so I'm going to go ahead and kill it for free. <laughs> terrible. Absolutely terrible. There it is. Got him. Oh, and that one was off because I was being blocked by my own man. Let's see if I can make the long shot here. Our bow skills are not so good, so there's going to be a little bit of variance in our fire. I probably should send the cavalry after him, too. That might speed this whole thing along. God, always playing everything improperly here. That's how we do it. Damn it. Oh, I think that... Nope, that wouldn't have gotten him either. It would have been close, though. We're getting a little bit better. Let's end that. We lost one man, a horseman. Don't really care. He's a Kurgit. They're not really the big part of my force that I'm concerned about. And we wiped out everybody else. Ayam got away, so that is what it is. I, I have light complaints about that situation, but nothing that I can really do about it. With regards to level ups, let's see what we've got going on. Nordic trained footmen are ready to go. We also want to start getting some of our Swadian knights ready to roll. The veteran horse archer. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We'll continue turning them into lancers. I mean, that seems to be the best thing for my strategy anyways that I can really do with the units to begin with, so let's ride through the enemy's territory before heading on up into SWAD territory and figuring out if maybe we can get ourselves... Ooh, there's Krayhask. How you doing, buddy? I see you're riding along the river. How's about a river battle? A battle for life and death. Or maybe just kind of for e-satisfaction. I don't know. Is he riding out on us? Okay, well... kind of collapse our infantry and once they're gathered up oh my god that's a lot of horsemen I hate fighting Kurgeats fighting Kurgeats is just plain obnoxious and then now that our infantry are all gathered up I'm just gonna send them in the thing about Kurgeats is while it's annoying to fight them they never really pose any type of tangible threat to the map 
Like, I've never seen a map that was just, like, dominated by Kyrgyz. And if so, I would have allied against them, because frankly, I just don't like them as a faction. I'm not really a fan. Ooh, hello. That's an axe. He's like, let me show it to you, up close. <laughs> Look at this new axe that I just got. <laughs> oh my, sometimes I think I entertain myself more than I entertain you guys. That might be why this whole thing works out so well. Sometimes people ask me, they're like, I don't understand how you just keep talking during your episode. I'm like, well, I just sort of imagine that I'm talking to myself, and I just say whatever would make me laugh, and then at that point, I just sort of hope that everybody else finds it funny too. Rolf has managed to slash someone to death and have, has thus been rewarded by the universe by being given stat points. It's weird how those things in life that, like, are considered karmically evil tend to level you up in video games. Did you just try and mace me? It's a coup. He wants to take over. He wants to be the new Mamluk Lord. Are we done? Fantastic. I hate fighting Kyrgyz. I think I've mentioned that at least 12 times. Lost a Lancer, two ma- oh my god. Terrible. Absolutely terrible. It's really... I need to get somebody on point just with surgery. Unfortunately, I can't find Nizar anywhere, and I'm apprehensive about assigning anybody else to do it. Let's capture some of these guys to offset the cost of hiring and training up new people. And then we'll head on into Swadian territory. Grab a few more swads. Which really sounds like something sort of disgusting. Like, yeah, I grabbed his swad. Like, ugh. Never do that. That's disgusting, man. At least don't tell me about it. Let's go to the marketplace, grab some more food. Cheap grain and some, ooh, some jerky. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the beef jerky, so I can never turn down the jerky. And now we need to go somewhere else. Maybe off towards Deerim. I'm going to beat up this caravan, though, while we're on the way. Who is this? Amdar? I think he decided he was going to try and roll out on us. I don't really think that would have worked out for him, though, because it was like 92 versus 30. Unless he's rocking just all kinds of crazy enemies. Let's charge him the toll for another 600, and then we'll go on up to Deerim, and maybe the Ransom Broker from the last episode will still be there. We made seven dinars rolling in the change. That's how you do it, my friends. That is how you set up a profitable life. Looks like the hired blades are only left here. Very, very unfortunate. I think I should probably buy some more food while I'm out and about. They have cheap grain. I'm going to take that off their hands. And maybe swing out to Suno. We do want to be semi-careful while we do this, because there could be Rodox around. I do know for a fact... Oh, they took way out without telling me. Great. Fantastic. What does this guy have? Lancers... I feel like my horsemen are a little battered right now, like I can't really get away with fielding an uber crazy force right now. Oh, I turned them in- when did I get Rodox guys? I don't recall ever getting Rodox guys. I'm gonna disband them because I would have wanted to- yeah, let's just drop them and we'll make a man at arms. And we're starting to develop back into an infantry. I mean, it's kind of one of those weird things where you always have those odd recovery periods. He wants us to go to Halmar. Honestly, I'm not really feeling the Serenids. I may drop out and go with Swadia for a while. Just not feeling it. It's probably going to cost us something. It's not going to go well for us. I'll leave it there. Changing factions once you've been enfeoffed. Which is a real word. I looked it up. Oh, we're about to be robbed. Damn it. Alright, so they've got bows. I'm going to try and pull them around the corner. And this guy right here has no helmet, so I'm going to try and aim all my shots for his head so that he takes way more damage than expected. There's 51 off, and then we need to get at this guy up here on the hill who's trying to be a sniper. Yeah, that's how you do it right there. That was definite heat of the moment. Q Asia. Okay, let's go back and get back to our business instead of dealing with robbers all day, every day. Where did these ransom brokers go? They vanish so quickly. It's the weirdest thing. Like, they don't move in between neighboring kingdoms. They just vanish and show up somewhere else every single week. It's weird. It's weird and I don't like it. It's like I've got teleporting ridiculous... Are you guys still around, really? You guys are still just hanging in there, huh? I have no idea where they must be recruiting from or anything. Another group of bandits? We have not been making ourselves popular. Who's trying to murder me? I can't even see where I'm being attacked from. 
Oh, he's inside. There's also ones behind me. That's a big, big issue. Okay, so off with his head. He's been taken care of. There's one over there. And they usually come in packs of like three to five. In some of the mods, they get really, really nasty. As you get more and more famous, like you can get groups of seven to eight of them, and it's just like, oh my, it turns into such a giant, ridiculous, oh hey, point blank javelin there, pal. That's not right. Also, your head is already bandaged. Would you get a tooth pulled or something? Doesn't matter now. That problem has come and gone. <laughs> Ramoon is over here, but I don't like selling people to Ramoon because he kind of half asses it. He gives you like 50 dinars for no matter what they are. I'd prefer to get the real payout from somebody that actually cares. Someone that cares about what they're buying. Let's head on over to Sargoth and continue our search. Continue our long and arduous search for something other than endless battle. There's also a tournament here. I think I'm going to fight in the tournament just to say that I did. Anybody upstairs? The guy in the white, he's a farmer. Okay. Oh, there he is. I was about to walk away. I'm glad I decided to come up here. So we'll sell off some of these sergeants. Probably make ourselves a good couple grand right there, which is nice. And then let's talk to this farmer to get his quest to save his village. So that we can get ourselves a little bit more honor. We'll fight in the tournament too, so placing a bet on myself. Let's hang tight. We should be able to take this no problem. He said as he was jumped by eight guys at once and then forced to block his way to victory. I hate it when I have to rely on other people to win my battles for me, especially in these tournaments. It makes me feel sad. And down he goes. Alright, and so the first round was won by Mad Dog McGriddle and team. Mad Dog McGriddle and the morning crew. I think that's what I would call it. My homies would be the morning crew because, you know, you can only get McGriddles in the morning. I had a McGriddle one time, and I felt so sick after eating a McGriddle that I never had one ever again. It was just like, well, I mean, I'm going to tell you what a McGriddle is. So essentially, it's pancakes. It's a sandwich made of pancake. So instead of having bread, you have pancakes. Let's begin with that. Not only are they pancakes, they're pancakes that are fried in the middle of a bunch of maple syrup. So that's the beginnings. Oh no, those guys are blue. I thought that I was the blue team. Well, hopefully it allows us to continue. Okay, I knocked out a lot of people. And so once they do that, they throw cheese and, like, sausage on top of it. And it's just ridiculous. I remember it was in high school. I got to school early. So I decided to swing through McDonald's and grab some food. And it was right when the McGriddle had come out. And I was like, I want a McGriddle. And I deeply, deeply regretted it. I mean, there's n there's nothing like begging to get out of second period so that you can go have raging... <laughs> so that you can relieve yourself. There, I'll keep it PC. I'll keep it nice and clean. But anyways... I'll put it like this. I used the bathroom so hard that my contact fell out. It was no good. Forget. <laughs> oh my god, that's disgusting on so many different levels. I... <laughs> yeah. Suffice it to say, a McGriddle is just a recipe for bodily pain. There's no reason, like, any human being should ever put that in their body. It's just something... It's like a large piece of rock. It's just not supposed to be inside you. Looks like it's me and Mercenary Swordsman. Come, generic Mercenary Swordsman, let us win the tournament. I'm gonna fight this mustachioed gentleman. Looks like he's been out fighting bears and chopping down trees and catching beavers. If, I feel like even with a practice axe, getting hit in the face with an axe would really, really hurt. Maybe it's just me and I'm being pedantic about this whole thing, but... I really do feel like these tournaments, we don't wear helmets, I mean, this is this is not safety approved. Then again, people used to die in medieval tournaments all the time, so whatever. Not gonna focus on it too heavily. If we luck out, I didn't notice any lords in this tournament, if we really luck out, we'll make the money. We'll be able to leave the castle. Everyone else will show up, yeah, and there'll be a second tournament. This happens on occasion. I don't know if I should do the second tournament. Let's go ahead and we'll help Fyrreichen, and that might be like one of the final things we do in the episode. Where is... is that what they wanted, or was it... Yeah. Show Fyrreichen. I always forget where it's at. Oh, it's that one right there on the peninsula. Okay. Let's ride out. 
And in the interest of making things happen, we should jump on in here. It's place, it says it's infested with bandits. That's much worse than just being simply occupied. I'm gonna have everybody group up on this one. I'm gonna work on my archery skills. I haven't gotten a lot of archery points lately, so I think I'm gonna line up in the back. And then I'm just gonna kinda fire into the side of them as they join our lines. Shoot him in the knee. His adventuring career is now over. I hate fighting on hills. I feel like I'm turning into Francis here, just kind of saying all the things that I hate, but honestly. Well, the goal was to work on my archery, unfortunately. Not getting much of a chance. Definitely need to like tighten the grid of fire that we have right now. Our archery skill is a little bit too wide. It's a little bit frivolous. Like I feel like I waste a lot of my arrows. Firing that under the fence though was pretty badass. That was that was the stuff right there. I feel like that scene in the Terminator where I'm just hitting everybody in the knee with stuff, trying to be non-lethal. Unfortunately, arrows to the knee kill you in this game too. You're shooting my horse for zero damage, man. Well, ten damage. A one and zero damage. I shoot you in your furry chest. I wish I had a suit made of fur. Well, maybe not. It seems sort of cruel given the time and age, but still. Were I in medieval times, my stuff would totally be made out of fur because that's the way I roll. We lost one marksman. Not bad. I'm going to take the honor instead, and they're going to be accepting to us. We'll get three more of these little guys joining up in our party. Because we need more Huskarls. We are definitely hurting for Huskarls. I think I will stop the episode here. And so, actually, nah. We'll break it off once we ride back down to our own territory. I don't really want to be a lord with the Serenids anymore. Not feeling it. I kind of wanted to do Vagirs, but eh, you know. We may do Rodox. I don't know. I just, I'm confused. I'm very, I'm terribly, terribly vexed in this group of episodes. Let's go to Peshmi and see if maybe they've got something for us to do. Yeah, the poverty of Peshmi is unbearable. That's because you lose, like, eight degrees of richness every time you get robbed, and you can't leave any type of garrison here. I think you can maybe make a watchtower, maybe, that you can put, like, five guys in, but I'm not sure about that. So they need cattle. Let's go do a cattle drive. He needs nine. I think last time we got him from Amashki, so that's what we'll do again. Unfortunately, they're gonna make me go to the village center. So let's hurry up and grab ourselves some cows so that we can make some nice steaks for our villagers. Everybody loves a good steak every now and again. Makes them feel a little bit better. Well, except vegans. Vegans don't like a good steak. Vampires don't like a good steak either. I feel like I've made that joke though. Let's see. We wanna buy some cattle. We want five. We wanna buy another group of cattle. We'll buy four. And five plus four is nine. And so now we should have a suitable amount of cows. Move forth, my bovine friends. On to your final... Well, I don't want to say final. That sounds a little morose. On to the milking pastures at Peshmi because we're totally not going to eat you. I hate driving cattle. <laughs> Another Francis moment. Where did they go? Oh, they went straight to Peshmi. Well, that works out. I lost them, but they arrived at the right place. I accept that. I suppose in managing- oh, we've still got 40 days left on building the mill. God, that's taking forever. I wish it would go a little quicker, but we have no engineering skill, and that's just how the cookie crumbles in this case. Village Elda, we have given you cattle. Well, that's it. I guess they don't have anything else. I suppose we could consider three, really? We're at 51, and you're only going to give me three guys. I suppose we can consider breaking off the episode, so I hope you guys are having fun. I'll see you guys in the next episode. My name is Splattercat. If you're new, welcome to the Nerdcastle, and I will see you guys next time. Take care out there, everybody.